I think. Because they did shut down for a while. So, oh, thank you. the corneum looks fine. Looks like it lost the solar elastosis. There's, looks like the E-prime glands and fat are maybe a little bit um, up. Or yeah, the, they seem a little higher than they should be. What do you think about the size of the fat? Really small. Okay. You know, there's pronounced lipoatrophy there. And then what kind of hairs do you see? Those, are those like dead reds in those? Or? So there are dead reds, and the outside is all crinkled like that. So those are catagen. Right. So what kind of things would give you mainly catagen hairs? Um, so AA or TT so or Lou's catagen hairs. Yeah, so Louis, which is syphilis or um, trichotillomania or alopecia areata, um, would be the ones that are likely to give you multiple catagen hairs. And then when you look in the fibrous tracts here, you have <coughs> pigment incontinence, okay. so. which would go with which one most likely? Alopecia areata. Alopecia areata, and then why is there so much dermal and lipoatrophy? Because what have they been trying to do to treat it? Uh, steroid. Yeah, so it was probably biopsied for non-response to intralesional steroid, and um, one of the questions is why is it not responding because the steroid's being injected too deep, right? If you're getting a lot of lipoatrophy, the steroid was probably going deep to where it needed to be. When you're injecting AA, if it's going in easily, you're too deep. You should be in where it's really hard to push it in because then you're uh, in dermis with a hair bulbs are sitting. Um, instead of down in the sub Q. Okay. Um, so we see a lot of. So, given that it is focused kind of high up on the hair, but also involves that crime coil, it looks like on that one, I think this is lupus. So, you know, eccrine coil involvement brings up the possibility of lupus. Absolutely. What kind but there's, of... But there's, more, there's neutrophils. Yeah, so this is neutrophilic, <coughs> which so is less... Never mind. Which is less lupus-y. Right. Right? And you have lots of thrombi and vessels. So you have definitely a vasculitis going on in addition to the folliculitis. Mm. Like folliculitis to Calvin's? Uh, folliculitis to Calvin's is certainly a separate of folliculitis. Doesn't usually give you vasculitis with it mm. though. I mean, this has a ripping vasculitis. Um, one of the things which we're not seeing in this case is we're not really seeing um, sebaceous gland. What if I told you that there was distinct necrosis of the sebaceous gland? So separative folliculitis with distinct necrosis of sebaceous gland. I don't know what that means. A anyone, any thoughts? That's, yeah, that's herpetic. Folliculitis. Herpes. Um, so herpes, you get a separative folliculitis. It often goes deep. It can be the presenting sign of zoster. It can be herpes in immunosuppression. Um, it can be systemic disseminated herpes. Um, one of the typical clues is it tends to be pretty inflammatory. It's often deep and um, you get associated necrosis of sebaceous gland. So 
And that's one of the one of the helpful clues. Yeah, it's, so the question is, is that artifactual or is that real? Not sure okay. about that. <laughs> um, the other cut looked like it was more real. Uh, there is a deep and, like, up there, I feel like the way it um, There's a deep and superficial infiltrate um, kind of in the infidibulum and down by the isthmus as well. Um, it looks like this is the... I was thinking that the separation was real, and it was because it was such a lichen infiltrate, we were getting it. Yeah, um, lichen infiltrate can certainly give you a, a Max Joseph space type of split. Looks like you got a fair number of catagen hairs here. Um, you got a catagen conversion. Um, there's a lot of secondary change on the, on the surface. Um, with some neutrophil crusting, I, and there's death of the top of the epidermis. So it's been, the whole thing's been excoriated. So there's a lot of evidence of excoriation here. See that whole dead red zone mm -hmm. up above? So this is something that's been picked at a lot. With perigo and excoriation, you can get a lot of conversion to catagen. It's almost like trichotil, where you just are keep going after and pulling that hair. Um, so I see a lot of secondary change. I'm not sure I'm seeing a lot of primary change here. What does it say? Trichotil. Okay. Well, I mean, there's certainly changes that look like trichotil with the um, with the multiple catagen hairs, but there's so much picking and necrosis of the epidermis. I mean, they're they're doing a lot more than just picking hairs, if that's what it is. Okay. <coughs> And, is, and are they all miniaturized, or are some more miniaturized than others? Some are more miniaturized than others. And that would go most commonly with? Like a pattern. Like pattern alopecia. Could also be alopecia areata. But AA and pattern are the two big ones that give you miniaturization. So there's at least a background of that. And then... There's a lot of sebaceous glands, which yeah. speak like maybe more like pattern. On which goes mind. with pattern. They're certainly lost as a very early finding in scarring alopecia. And here they're not lost, they're preserved. There is some inflammation high. That's at a level around the infundibulum. That's common in pattern alopecia. It's probably just subderm, seborrheic folliculitis. So... I think you're right. Best diagnosis here would be just pattern. So, uh, looks like there's uh, <coughs> some infiltrate around the uh, air follicle there, maybe. Yep. Um, and zooming in. looks like mainly are these lymphocytes maybe angulated a little bit? Um, so that that's a very good thought. Um, you'd be thinking then of folliculotropic MF, right, right. 
Um, in Folliculotropic MF, how much spongiosis do you normally get? Not much. And so here, there's a lot. yeah, there's a lot more stuff, you know, a lot more clear space than there are lymphs, which is kind of the opposite of what you get in CTCL. Right. Um, interestingly, there are a couple of EOs here. Okay. So, would you think about, like, I mean, you see them around, like, an alopecia areata? Um, within, like, fibrous. I guess it's more around fibrous tract remnants. We see Fab fibrous tract remnants where you get EOs and pretty deep. Right. This is pretty superficial, right, in the infundibulum. So, um, question would be, is it just spongiotic folliculitis or is there something else, you know, replacing the follicle? What other clearer stuff could you see in a follicle that tends to go with inflammation? Like mucin? Yeah, like follicular yeah. mucinosis. So you think about... Yeah. So this is, you know, either a spongiotic folliculitis, like a disseminate infundibular folliculitis, you know, so who gets that? Who gets recurrent and disseminated infundibular folliculitis? Yeah, yeah. Like young, young yeah, black yeah. guys, yeah. typically. Young black guys, and it's a distinct cutoff where they go from normal skin to this skin that's like goose flesh. And the goose flesh shows just spongiotic infundibular folliculitis. Um, and then the other question would be alopecia mucinosa. Um, spongiotic folliculitis can have some mucin in it, so that can be a... That can be a problematic call sometimes, but that's definitely your differential. Huge chunk of tissue. Looks like a lot of little fiber streamers throughout it. And then looks like And is the dermis normal or not normal? No, it looks very thickened and like hypertrophic scar. Yeah, so there's like hypertrophic scar and there's... Um, is it just... I thought that was another just streamer, but... Well, there's hair fiber in it. So, and there's inflammation. So there's folliculitis, there's hypertrophic scar. And one of the clues would be if you look at the inflammatory component and there are lots of plasma cells mm -hmm. so the neck. in there, that can be a clue to location that you're on the neck. And here there are, there are tons of plasma cells in here. So... Um, AKN would be the most likely. Correct. Well done. Alright. Mm. <coughs> uh, so it looks like there's kind of like multi vocal patchy infiltrate. I think that's what I'm saying. Or those I uh, agree. Patchy blue. infiltrate, and where is it yeah. tending to hit the hairs? So it looks about like that one of the isthmus, so deeper in the infundibulum. Okay, which would suggest Loop, um, yeah, lupus. And what's our stain? Uh, I mean, is this H? Is this not H and E? I guess probably not H and E because we see lots of reddish purple glycogen. It's a PAS. A PAS. And so like what else are you seeing? Thickening. You're seeing massive basement membrane zone thickening, pigment incontinence, and, pigment incontinence, and vacuolar interface, <coughs> so lupus. lupus, very good. Yeah, there's certainly some crusting here, yeah. and there's inflammation there that... It's a lot of crush. It's hard to tell how much is lymph, and looks like there maybe are some fragments of neutrophils in there as well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, like a tinea, and I'd say probably more like ecto. This is all around the outside. Although the, there is some invasion of the hair follicle. Um, so tinea or Miyake's granuloma would look the same. And um, there's rarely any granuloma in Miyake's granuloma despite the name. <coughs> so uh, punch biopsies, some larger terminal hairs, there is some inflammation um, that's both uh, in the papillary dermis and also around the follicles. It looks like there's some necrosis in the epidermis and uh, and maybe um, the, the lower spacious glands. This could be herpes as well. Yeah, and the dead cells, are they together or are they um, acanthalytic? Yeah, a little bit acanthalytic. So there's ballooning, there's acanthalysis, mm -hmm. and there's necrosis of follicle. Can't really make out if there's selective necrosis of sebaceous unit, but it's certainly the whole follicle is necrotic with ballooning degeneration, and that would be herpetic. And that's often how zoster looks on biopsy. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, they, they, I thought I saw some zoster's going <coughs> deeper down. Let's go look at this. There are some spacious glands there, and they don't look as necrotic as the superficial part of the, <coughs> of the follicle, particularly. Um, but with the ballooning degeneration, necrosis of the epidermis, um, that still absolutely would be good for, um, for herpetic. Okay. So one of those looks like a crumpled sock. You have a rumpled sock cuticle and a distorted antigen bulb. So that's like antigen. Like um, uh, not. I guess technically it's an antigen effluvium, but um, what you're trying to say is loose antigen uh, syndrome. Right. Whereas, what are your most common causes of antigen effluvium? <coughs> so, like heavy metal, heavy metal toxicity, and chemo, chemo and alopecia areata, and syphilis. All of those are attacks on the matrix that shut down the matrix, so you get a tapering of the hair fiber where it snaps off. <laughs> right, so. Alopecia areata is an inflammatory insult to the matrix. Syphilis looks the same. Chemo is a, you know, a toxic insult to the matrix, as is heavy metal poisoning, especially thallium. And this is loose antigen, which is a, an inherited disorder of the keratin, where your inner root sheath and cuticle keratin are soft. So that soft cuticle, instead of being a hard keratin that anchors the hair in place, just sort of rumples back and lets the hair fall out. See if I can walk you through this one. I see. Yeah, it looks like there's like vacuolar change on the side, and yeah, I'd go um, beyond that. It's all it's kind of spongiotic okay. into the follicle, and there are lots and lots and lots yeah. of eosinophils. So, what kind of things give you a spongiotic folliculitis with tons and tons of eos? 
Does Scepterm do yes? Or I know it's funny how it's Scepterm usually does it. It gives you, um, it can give you uh, lymphoid infundibular folliculitis, and it can give you scale crust overlying the follicle. I mean, there's a bug around there, I imagine, but I don't want to think about that. So you can see it with follicular contact dermatitis, mm -hmm. and then really common with HIV. Oh. It's an affiliate folliculitis. You know, one of the things you're supposed to think of is HIV. Itchy people, itchy, bumpy people, and you see eosinophilic folliculitis. You know, that can be one of the clues to HIV. Like infiltrate involving the um, isthmus of the hair as well as the spacious mitts, um, and they're kind of so I would consider this to be lupus, even though there's not like a lot of um, vacuolar like infiltrate at the top, so more of like a DOE like picture. Yeah, there are a lot of EOs here as well, mm -hmm. which would go a little bit against lupus. It's also, I'd say this is more spongiotic than interface. Okay. So a lot of sponge, a lot of EOs, um, again, could be just follicular eczema, could be AIDS, you know, HIV, eosinophilic folliculitis. Um, you'd probably want to look at other sections to see if there were follicular mucinosis. Um, in this one, if you look at the lymphs, some of the lymphocytes are absolutely huge. And, you know, th this one is awfully spongy, so I would not call MF on this one. Um, that's appar apparently what it turned out to be with the slides labeled. The, or, oh, your clue here would be EOs, which you see in tumor stage MF, and in folliculotropic MF, not in other forms so much. Um, the big lymphocytes would at least make you think about it, um, but it's it's way too spongiotic to call it on that particular slide. Um, so. Looks like there's a little cross section, horizontal cross section there. Yeah, a little cross section. Um, it looks pretty deep in the fat, a little bit of inflammation. Yep. What do you think about the diameter of your hairs? Um, they look smaller. Yeah, they're small. So, what things give you miniaturization? AA and syphilis, I guess, with that. And then also patterns. Yep. AA pattern and syphilis. So, that's kind of your differential for miniaturization. <laughs> then you got vertical. And they also look miniaturized. Mm -hmm. And you go down into your fibrous tract. You have a little bit of pigment there, which would yeah. like AA or something. So a lot of pigments, so more likely alopecia areata and syphilis. Well done. And this one, we're going to have to recover slip. This is worth recover slipping. <laughs> Don't think we can read that there. And that one is a syphilitic alopecia, so it would be worth soaking that cover slip off. If they just soak that off in xylene and then restain it, that would be worth doing. So it looks like they. Perifollicular dense infiltrate. Perifollicular dense infiltrate. Um, looks like maybe lymph, but hard to tell from this pattern. Yeah, probably lymphoid. Another clue to lymphoid is the bundled hairs tend to be in doublets or six packs. Uh, six packs. Do you see six round oh, circles there or two? Uh -huh. So. Six Usually yes. it's the second one. <laughs> Usually it's the second one, but in this case, it's it the first. That is true. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
Um, <laughs> so they, they do look like pairs of two to me, so doublets. Doublets, we'll say doublets. And doublets usually go with lymphoid scarring alopecia, whereas six packs go with separatives. So things tufted folliculitis, where you have big dolls, hair tufts, six or more hairs, tend to go with folliculitis to Calvin, separative, whereas just doublets tend to go with lymphoid alopecia, lupus and LPP. And in this one, we're more infundibulum than isthmus. So LPP. So LPP would be the most likely. One of the things that could help is do a direct immunofluorescence. A well-established lesion of lupus on the scalp usually is strongly positive with IF, whereas LPP is negative. Like a mucus seal. So you see the minor salivary gland <laughs> and you see the big seal there filled with mucin and then mucosa above. Where do you get mucus seals? Um, get a couple of places, usually oral mucosa there. And where on the oral mucosa? Um, I guess I think more of like, like the lip. And Put your tongue right in the middle of your lower lip. Right, you don't you feel much. Feel right? the bumps. So you feel above your kind of your canines mm -hmm. on each side on the bottom lip, and it's like tapioca. That's where all your minor salivary glands are. That's where you would biopsy for amyloid, biopsy for Sjogren's, and also where mucus seals occur, be careful because that's also where your mental nerve comes up, which is your sensory nerve to your left. So you never snip in that location. It's okay to spread tissue and squeeze, but you don't want to snip in that area because you can snip nerve. Touch map, see. Um, so it looks. A pigment cast. Yeah. So pigment cast, and what do you see pigment casts in? Uh, Trichotil and AA. So trichotillomania, AA, syphilis, um, and it's just as common in trichotil and AA, so it doesn't favor one or the other. Mm -hmm. So this is, unlike the pigment we saw before, this is not down in the fibrous tract, this is in the follicular channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the hair itself is so normal or miniaturized? Um, I will say miniaturized. And is it a normal looking miniaturized hair or is it squiggly looking somewhat like a crayon a child has held too long on a hot day? The latter. The latter of the two and that tends to go That's with... Nice. That's uh, AA. Right? Yeah, that tends to go with alopecia areata, those little squiggly nanogen hairs. And then here we see pigment and fibrous tract remnants for those online. Let's get over a little bit. Okay, so pigment and fibrous tract remnants here. And that definitely goes with alopecia areata. Very good. Kind of inflammatory cell in the center. The neutrophils. Neutrophils and at the periphery. Yeah, exactly. The cytoplasm merges mm -hmm. with other cytoplasm. Um, so histiocytic, so you have a stellate abscess with palisaded granuloma. Um, that's the sort of thing you could see with um, Wigner's. Um, granulomatosis with angitis. Um, you could see it with infections, cat scratch, lymphogranuloma, venereum, atypical mycobacteria, tularemia, sporotrichosis. When it's associated with a follicle, 
it's just suppurative and granulomatous folliculitis. Mm -hmm. And when it is associated with follicles on the eyelid, then we call it Yeah. So hort horteolum is acute and then chronic granulomatous is palatium. So some patchy uh, appears to be prominent with acidic inflammation. Um, there's maybe some vertical orientation to some of it. And, uh, and it where in the dermis is it? It's more isthmus level. More isthmic, which sounds like you're lisping when you say it that way. Yeah, uh, DJ also is a, a little effaced, and there's maybe some interface damage going on there. So, so it certainly points towards lupus. It absolutely points towards lupus. Very good. Mm. Okay. And um, this is an elastic stain. We're too early to see a whole lot of elastic loss in this one. We're kind of superficial around the area, more actually of the infundibulum than the isthmus with some lichenoid interface. So I'd favor LPP, but lichenoid lupus could look similar, and a DIF would be the way you tell them apart. Okay, so this comes into you, a bag full of hairs, all of which look just like that. So what kind of hairs are they? Club hair. So telogen hair. Telogen hair. So that would go with usually telogen effluvium. Great. So let's get it. So would you have a machine? Do you think it's a scarring alopecia? No, because there's great maintenance of the sebaceous glands. No, because there's great maintenance of sebaceous glands. Well said. And the hairs, are they big strapping terminal hairs? No, they are rather vertically challenged. Oh, uh, well. I think that, I mean, that one extends down to the fat, but the rest is inside. Yeah, I and it, but is it a big strapping hair, or is it Negative. a pretty puny hair? So puny hair, so punification of the hairs mm -hmm. goes with? Uh, androgenetic alopecia. Androgenetic or? Uh, alopecia areata. Or? Syphilis. You are correct, sir. So alopecia areata, syphilis, um, androgenetic would all give you miniaturization. Which of those tends to give you pigment in the fibrous tract remnants? That would give more of a pain. Alopecia areata. So you've got miniaturization, <coughs> retention of sebaceous glands, pigment in fibrous tracts, EOs in fibrous tracts, <coughs> lymphs in fibrous tracts, all of those things would point you towards alopecia areata, but anytime you say AA, you also have to think of the possibility of syphilis. Portion of the follicle. It's affecting the isthmus. The isthmus. Very good. <laughs> and what else do you see? I see vacuolar um, infiltrates or well at the DEJ. And pigment incontinence at the DEJ, follicular plugging. So I have an isthmic <laughs> infiltrate <laughs> and lupus. lupus. Very good. So you've got. Pigment incontinence, interface dermatitis, 
infiltrate that hugs the isthmus and is lymphoid follicular plugging. Looks like lupus. Follicular mucinous fibrosis, which always means scarring alopecia. So I see a sebaceous gland there. Are there any sebaceous glands in here? No. All gone. Right. So that also suggests so there is some miniaturization. We probably have a background of pattern alopecia that's mm -hmm. half the population, 50 50. Um, but there's also scarring mm -hmm. alopecia going on here. Okay. And you have a naked hair shaft field for those online. Naked hair shaft there with a little granuloma around it sitting in a fibrous tract remnant. So it's definitely a destructive alopecia. Naked hair shafts, right? Mm -hmm. So naked hair shaft, destructive alopecia, perifollicular mucinous fibrosis goes with that. Um, and when you look at your hairs, I see some doublets. I see one triplet, but no six packs. My infiltrate look mainly lymphoid, and the tendency towards more towards the doublet side than the six pack side certainly goes with a lymphocytic rather than a um, than a separative alopecia. So, what would your differential be? Say like in point of would be up there. Yeah, LPP would be up there and... Um, I guess discoid lupus. Yeah, you'd still have to have lupus in there. And your next step would probably be a DIF because your decision tree is, do I start <coughs> Plaquenil or am I more uh, Actos, Retinoid, um, cell sept, all the things that we use for like in Plano pilaris. It's very different how we treat lupus from LPP and DIF will usually tell the two apart. Mm -hmm. If it's a well-established lesion. <clears throat> okay, so we're looking at a nevus and what's going on incidentally in that nevus? Flip the condenser down because I think it's easier to see. Is that a worm or suture or what is that? Uh, I'm not sure. I should have that, but I don't. So, anyone, all those little bundled vellus hairs goes with? Uh, it's not like an eruptive vellus hair cyst, is it? Um, not really eruptive vellus hair cyst. That would be deeper and and more cystic. So this would be just trichostasis spinulosa, oh. which can be incidental, um, or when you have a lot of it, it looks kind of blackhead-like. You'll see people who look like they have blackheads all over their chest and back, and it's just these little tufts of retained <coughs> vellus hairs. <coughs> How's that different from the pili multigemini? multiple flicker units? That is multiple antigen hairs emptying into a single follicle. Whereas this is hairs that are being um, going through, the, there's one follicle, but the vellus hairs are never shed. They're retained because of sticky hyperkeratosis. Correct. That's why it's trichostasis, correct. Very good. Not a lot of inflammation, a little superficial. Not a lot of inflammation and spacious glands. They look pretty good. Pretty Still good. Present. So we're probably dealing with scarring or non scarring? Non scarring. Okay. Um, and don't see a lot of background scar. Hairs seem to be pretty uniform in size, but smaller. Okay. And what part of the hair follicle are we? Um, that'd be. Isthmus, 
um, can think out or achieve. Probably a little deep to isthmus, inferior segment, um, where we have a big glycogenated okay, okay. outer root sheath. Kind of bulb area. Yeah. It, and then there we're bulb. Okay. Right? So the fact that you're seeing both of those in the same cut suggests that one hair is higher up than the other. Mm -hmm. So it suggests you have some miniaturization mm -hmm. of hairs. What's your differential for miniaturization of hairs? Um, AA, syphilis, and um, pattern. AA, syphilis, and pattern. And what kind of hair do we have there? A little uh, catagen hair. Catagen so. hair. And this one, which looks at first glance like antigen, actually has lots and lots of dead red, so mm -hmm. it's probably early catagen, right. right? So multiple catagen hairs, miniaturization, pointing you towards um, eh, eh. alpigeriata or syphilis. Don't forget syphilis looks, you know, can look just like AA. <coughs> See a lot of sebaceous glands. Do you see some occurring glands? There's a lot so of not many sebaceous glands at all. I see one intact. All the rest appear to be gone, which suggests you're probably scarring alopecia. Scarring alopecia. Right? Um, it looks like some loss of follicular units, probably. And then do you see? Looks like lymphoid infiltrate. Uh, in places, some look um, periacrine, perifollicular. So if you have right. periacrine and perifollicular lymphoid, you're and, uh, lupus. thinking of lupus. And um, if you look at the, let's see, some of the follicles here, there's a little bit of um, um, scar. If you can get, yep. Little perifollicular mucinous fibrosis and also some vacuolar interface vacuolar. around the follicle. So I definitely agree with you. Go with lupus. Okay, um, see a lot of preserved sebaceous units, but I don't see a whole lot of hair fibers in this particular. Yeah, this preserved sebaceous unit, so it's not a scarring alopecia, mm -hmm. but you don't see a lot of fibers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it absolutely could be a um, just pattern mm -hmm. alopecia, mm -hmm. sort of a later pattern alopecia. Um, this one was actually a biopsy done during chemo. Um, yeah, I don't see a lot of terminal follicles. You'd expect to see them just with matrix shutdown in there. <coughs> the fact that the biopsy was done, this person probably had pattern alopecia that was advanced, and with the chemo, they lost some hair, hair cycles with the chemo, and so they've just accelerated their pattern alopecia. That's one of the things you see with people who've had multiple episodes of chemotherapy. Um, it's robbed you of the normal hair cycles that you were supposed to get. Okay. So you have a hair shaft. <laughs> Bless you. And then it gets really skinny at one point. See that where it just kind of, it doesn't, it didn't quite snap, but it definitely got skinny there, right? So what do you call that? Hourglass like constriction of a hair? Polpincus. Polpincus anomaly. And polpincus is where you have a temporary matrix shutdown, but it wasn't quite enough to give you a tapered fracture. So you can see it with alopecia areata, heavy metal poisoning, chemotherapy, crash diet would be the most common thing that does it, where you get a temporary 
antigen shutdown, but it's not as severe as what you get in alopecia areata or syphilis or most heavy metal poisoning or chemo where it would really snap the hair. Well, it's a little bit less than that. Biopsy or take a hair sample then, would you notice different like, um, in the hair? Oh, the, the scalp looks normal. So how would, how would they know that? Was this just incidental then? Um, the um, often they have a change in texture of the hair, okay. and so the shafts get examined. That's a good question. So, you know, how did the biopsy end up getting done? Cross neutrophilic cross puts you in the category of. Well, like uh, Langerhans kind of gives a cross. And so cross Langer LCH absolutely can give you an overlying crust. Also, it could just be a separative folliculitis. So you know, looking for a Langerhans cell infiltrate, um, very very smart thing to do. Good for you. And then um, just the separative in the follicle. What would be your differential for a separative folliculitis? Because I don't see any Langerhans cells in here. So infectious. So infectious, including. Including fungal. Fungal and bacterial, mm -hmm. and. Like acne chelidalis. Um, acne chelidalis, acne, um, steroid acne, um, AGEP. Absolutely, and of those. Which one is most likely to give you a layered corneum where you have normal lamellar corneum sitting on top of compact red? Is that like fungal? That's good. That's a plutotinia. And then these little circles here in the compact red are where you're seeing a couple of hyphae. So that's all clue to fungal folliculitis. Maintain full size terminal hairs, sebaceous mm -hmm. glands. Yep, sebaceous glands. Good. There's some trichomalacia, it looks like. Looks like there is some trichomalacia, and in it's fact, you see pulses. it's not just a hair cast, but it is really a hair fiber. Oops, for those online, there you go. Uh, it's really a hair fiber that's degenerated, turned jelly like, so trichomalacia. So this is? Trichotillosis. Trichotillosis, which is a non pejorative term for trichotillomania. Very good. looks better up on the screen, yeah. right? So, so first off, do you see a lot of... There's not a lot of hair. There's <laughs> not a lot of hair, there's right? There's a lot of scars, scars the And there are a lot of erector pili <laughs> muscles, mm -hmm. but not a lot of hair. And so with erector, orphaned erector pili and sebaceous glands present or absent? They're absent. Absent, you're thinking probably... Uh, scarring alopecia. Scarring this alopecia. Too far gone for me to really tell exactly what it was, so... Um, so the question yeah, is, is it too far gone to tell you what uh, it was? So there's some lichenoid infiltrate there. So there's uh, some lichenoid infiltrate sitting right over an erector pili. And then some actual infiltrate in the erector pili as well, it looks like around the unit. Um, so LPP. So LPP or, lupus. I'd still keep lupus in there, and so I'd probably do a DIF and an elastic. 
Because in, in lupus that's this far advanced, you'd expect side-to-side -side scarring, whereas LPP is like sniper fire that takes out little wedges where the hair follicles are. So that usually, you know, DIF needs another specimen, whereas elastic you can do on what you have. So miniaturization, not a lot of inflammation, um, sebaceous glands intact, so what's your differential? So not scarring alopecia, say like a pattern versus a AA versus syphilis. So non-scarring with miniaturization, pattern AA syphilis, it's important to keep all of those in mind. And this one, you know, I don't see anything more diagnostic. I don't see EOs. I don't see anything diagnostic for alopecia areata, but by history, that's what this was, was mm -hmm. AA. Um, Are those EOs or like necrotic? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. There's a lot of like, okay. like yeah, these they, things? Yeah. Oh, little blood vessels. Huh. Mm -hmm. Just like little capillary sized blood vessels. Um, but, you know, if EOs were present down there, that certainly would lead you towards alopecia areata or syphilis. In this case, it's a non-scarring alopecia with miniaturization. You've got to keep all of those in mind. The clinician would probably tell you there's no way this is pattern, mm -hmm. unless sometimes in a diffuse AA that may be their question. If, there's, if it's diffuse AA and the biopsy is not giving you an answer, the best, easiest way to get to an answer is have the patient collect all their shed hairs. If they're telogen, it's probably pattern. Mm -hmm. If they're tapered fractures in there, it's alopecia areata. Mm. So, kind of a patchy dent to filtrate throughout the dermis. Patchy dense infiltrate. Um, the dermis is normal or not it's, normal? Uh, it's definitely thickened. Definitely thickened. Um, looks like some. And the main paravascular inflammatory cell is. Um, a little clear paranuclear hop, eccentric clock face nucleus. Uh, plasma cell. Lots of plasma cells. So. Scar, hypertrophic scar, plasma cells, folliculitis. The um, acne keloidalis. Acne keloidalis, very good. Right. A little bit of inflammation, some old fibrous tracts. Um, and at what level is the inflammation? It looks pretty deep, kind of the dermal sub -Q junction. So still kind of isthmus, I would say. Yeah, kind of isthmus to deep isthmus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which would be what what disease's territory? Uh, lupus. Lupus, like most likely. Okay. So, the large infiltrator around the hair follows a little. <coughs> uh, so, neutrophils, so maybe some EOs, separate folliculitis. Looks like there is a fungal process going on in the follicle as well. And it does look like you have a fungal infected yeah, hair, so. Tinea or myopes. Let's see. It looks like that is the one piece that we have there. Okay. Um, it's a little like this kind of 
infiltrate around the epidermis. But, um, like, like an infiltrate. Yeah, it looks almost like it's lichenoid, mm -hmm. right? So you'd, with it being that high, you'd think of possibility of lupus and LPP. Mm. What are the sebaceous glands weighing in there? Um, I mean, are they involved? Yeah. yeah, they're retained pretty well, yeah, right? Yeah, they're, they're retained for sure. So, you know, if it's LPP, it would have to be super, super, super early, early where you haven't lost yeah. any. Or, you know, that could just be a little superficial, like a seborrheic type folliculitis high, yeah. if um, there's no loss elsewhere, and that would go more with pattern. So that would be kind of your differential with the... Sebaceous glands weighing in to maybe not scarring alopecia. This kind of has a lupus look. Yeah, it's a little, little deeper where you might think more towards isthmus, more towards lupus. And if you wanted to know lupus versus LPP, it's probably your best study. DIF. DIF. Very good. Okay. That's it. That is probably the chapter that residents struggle with the most of any, and you guys did well. Thank you. Where else is the loss of sebaceous glands with like the scarring of species? Like we never see like.